This is an example of a file infecting virus. This is a crypto miner that utilizes your machine's CPU for malicious purposes. This is how a remote access Trojan looks like. And this is a ransomware that locks your system until you deliver your payment to hackers. Being able to visualize how malware and viruses operate is just one of VirusTotal's features you probably never heard before. Typically, if we want to confirm if a file is a virus or not, we will first get the checksum of the file and paste it in VirusTotal. Then from here, we just look at this part of the page. If it is red, then the file is a virus. Else, it's not a concern, and we can go ahead, open, or run the file. But I find some interesting information most of us don't bother looking at. For example, we can cast our votes, which serve as the community score. A score of negative means the file is harmful, else a positive score means the file is harmless. This gives better consensus whether a file is really harmful or not. You can also reanalyze a file, and it will scan again in a sandbox environment. It allows you to perform the analysis without re-uploading the file, which is useful if you want to get up-to-date information about the virus. We can also see here the Yara rules that match the file. Yara rules are detection logic on how to identify a particular virus through byte sequence, strings, or other type of markers. Then below, of course, we see the antivirus engines that flagged the file, as well as those that didn't detect it. Under the Details tab, we see the different hashes. The vhash is a type of hash used for similarity detection. Then we have the Community tab, which shows other useful information that came from various people. One of the things I really like is the threat graph. This shows us the network connections, DNS queries performed, and related files about the virus. Here we see that it identifies the file as a Mirai malware, which turns a Linux device into a remotely controllable bot. This file is quite new, so let's find something that has more information. Most of us only put hashes here, but you can also type anything you want. For example, let's try to look for ransomware. This one is a Zoom installer, which is interesting. So let's open it. The threat graph is giving us more information now. In the middle, we still see the main virus. Then we see the domains it contacted. This one is flagged even though it doesn't seem a malicious domain. But doing a quick Google search, it looks like this was the domain used by hackers to serve the Zoom installer. There is also another connection made to Microsoft Teams domain, which I'm not entirely sure the purpose. If we go to the URL it tried to talk to, we see here the actual endpoint where the installer was hosted. So just from here, we can guess that this malware is a dropper, which pulls other malware into the system, meaning it is used during the first stage of attack. Aside from domains, a malware can also contact other public IP address that is not registered under a domain name. That can be a kind of technique to avoid detection since domain registration produce paper trails that can lead to hackers. Then we have here the files that are dropped to disk. A malware doesn't work alone. It can pull other files into the compromised machine to complete the attack. So as we see here, looking at the threat graph allows us to profile the malware. We know the connections being made and the files being saved to disk. This saves us time reverse engineering the malware to understand the behavior. Only downside is that it doesn't show us the exact sequence of the attack. Other tools can be used for that purpose like any run where you can clearly see the malware activity inside a sandbox environment. Aside from file hash and strings, we can also look for IP address and domains. This is very useful if you want to check whether a link is malicious or not, and it will help protect you from phishing attacks. VirusTotal also has a browser extension. This allows you to quickly scan links anywhere in the page. This extension is available in Chrome and Firefox. It also has a CLI tool, which is another way of checking a file without searching through the browser. This is another huge time saver. Using it is very easy. You just pass the hash of a file and wait for the results. If you want to perform an analysis on a new file, you can do it as well. Or you can also search for strings and domains similar on how we do it inside the web page. If you want to build your own scanner based from VirusTotal, you can do it through the API. For example, before downloading a file, we can pass it through our custom downloader script. Inside the script, we import the VirusTotal module. Then we have two functions here. First is for downloading the file. Inside this, we pass the hash to the scan file function. If the file was not flagged as malicious, we'll continue to download it. Else, we abort the script. Inside the scan file function, we can put several logic. For example, we check the file hash with virus total. Or we can also check the IP address or the domain where the file is coming from. This is similar to how browsers are doing it every time we download a file. But this time, we do it in the terminal. As we see in this video, we can use VirusTotal other than just analyzing file hashes. We can use it to look for domains, analyze basic virus behavior, and use in scripts.
Downside is that if you need advanced features like threat hunting and increased API limits, you need to pay for subscription. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.